My body is forever damaged from training jujitsu. Yeah, I've, I've felt like I got the shit beat out of me before from powerlifting and things like that. One thing I've always learned is that it always passes. There's a difference between, yeah, I want to do powerlifting versus I want to do powerlifting from now until the time I die. Training and recovery are not two separate things. As a martial artist, if you're not doing things in the gym, you can't expect to be able to do it for a long time. You know, this idea and this mentality of, you know, going hard and just saying F it, I'm gonna go in. When you're already banged up, you just have to be careful of that. Jiu-jitsu saved my life but destroyed my body is misleading. It's not jujitsu that destroyed this man's body. It's potentially his actions. Yeah, pain is coming our way and you may as well live your life like a savage. You might as well try your hardest at things. But you do have to be level-headed at the same time. Mark, you've told me many times, like, hey, I dare you to take one day off of jujitsu instead of, you know, killing yourself. And go do something else that's really hard. With whatever physical thing that you're trying to do, if you don't upkeep your body, you will not be in it in the next 10 years. I do that a lot. I'm, like, exploding all over the house, burping, farting, sneezing, coughing. The morning usually at jujitsu doesn't start until I let out like a pretty good deep like burp, and I'm like, all right, cool, I can breathe, let's go. Does it happen in jujitsu like uh, where you start going real hard and then sometimes your <clears throat> like your throat mm -hmm. gets burny? Like it happens to me sometimes when I'm running. Oh, burnt? No, I thought you meant like you got to clear your throat mid roll, which I have. Mm -hmm done that because like allergies or something and i was mm. like fuck i can't clear it and then you already can't breathe and i'm like, I'm like sorry dude i'm just dying over here yeah so not not that like burning like, yeah where you can taste like pennies feeling. yeah yeah <laughs> sometimes when i'm running early in the morning and if it's like a harder run then i'll just like burn I'm like, eh, eh, eh. I'm like what the hell food suggestion for you guys our prior episode we had ali gilbert on the podcast she gave us all cookies this if you haven't eaten yours it yet, looks have like you? a giant chocolate chip is what it looks yeah, like yeah dude this is such a good cookie yeah now it is caloric i'm dense. glad you ate that and not the other thing she gave us <laughs> <laughs> you mean our little dick friend right here our little weenie yeah. it's so cute but um <laughs> it's like 500 calories has 25 grams of protein quite a bit of fat and carbs but at the same time 25 <laughs> grams of protein it's well-rounded yep and then mark what'd you mix up here this is Banana. Oh, yeah. Banana uh, cream steak shake with some uh, the uh, chocolate uh, hydration from mm. Within You brand. So there you go. The mel I'm sorry, guys. The <laughs> melding of the flavors. So mm -hmm. good. But Glam Cookies. Go to the Instagram Dough Palace. Send us some of these cookies, please. I will buy some. These are so good. It's super smart. Super smart to just chuck some protein in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can Why make not, this at right? home, too, if you wanted to, but buy it. Uh, and a Smokey was telling us to heat him up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I made a mistake. I'm too deep. I you're, can't heat it up. You're now. too just, excited. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to hold off and heat mine up. Mm -hmm. mm. We'll see. Big ass cookies. Big Close ass cookie. That's what we need. You have a little. Uh, oh, what you got? Yeah, no. This is the uh, the clip that we're gonna watch for oh, right okay. now. There and guys, go. don't worry. We're not gonna be talking about jujitsu the whole podcast. But this <laughs> is a really interesting video that came across the feed, and apparently many of you guys have already see saw it. But We'll let it play. This guy says pretty much the title, Jiu-Jitsu saved my life, but destroyed my body. And that's an interesting thing to, to put forward. But we won't watch the whole thing. We're going to watch parts of it. You guys should check it out, but let, let's, let's see it. My body is forever damaged from training jujitsu. I started training 10 years ago. I'm a purple belt. If you know anything about jujitsu, the belt ranking system is white, blue, purple, brown, black for adults. And then they have belts beyond black, but your last name pretty much has to be Gracie if you want a red belt or a red and white belt. I'm gonna be 39 years old in a few months. At this point, my knees hurt all the time. Neck pain, which I ended up getting x-rayed at one point and I had some degeneration in the, a couple discs in my neck. My back hurts, broken, dislocated fingers and toes. Can you just my pause it just for a second? Um, you know, I, I've felt like this before. Like, <laughs> I've felt, I felt, uh, yeah, I've, I've felt like I got the shit beat out of me before from powerlifting and things like that. Mm -hmm. Um. But one thing I've always learned is that it always passes. It's like a particular feeling for a little while. So I wonder, you know, he is mentioning being, you know, more <clears throat> consistent and stuff like that. Um, I'm wondering when he did have time off, he said like, you know, uh, COVID maybe interrupted some of his training. I wonder if he had a lot of these symptoms at that point, because what I've learned over the years is so many things are, re not everything's reversible, but so many things are reversible. 
and the way that you feel. Um, oftentimes, like, uh, you can get reactionary based off the way that you feel. That's why um, Rogan always talks about, like, these guys retiring in the ring. He's like, I don't know. He's like, I don't think they should do that. I think, but it's hard because you just fought. You probably just lost. Yeah. And you probably just lost for the third time in a row. And you're like, peace, I'm out, you know, because of all the pain. But what if you had time to just uh, step back? What if you had an opportunity to step back and to be a little bit more patient and say, you know what? I'm probably not going to fight for a little while. I'm not going to completely retire, but I'm going to take about a year, collect my thoughts. I bet you that you could make yourself feel better almost with any sport that you're doing. Yeah. And I wonder if, like, you know, I think this would be a good video for you guys to watch in full so you can talk. Because he talks about his, he's, you know, he's been doing jujitsu for 10 years. So he's had a little bit mm -hmm. of time off and he came back to it. But, you know, it is a contact sport. And same thing with, with powerlifting, not a contact sport, but you're working with a lot of heavy load. Now, when you have something that happens, do you keep banging your head against the wall and doing the same thing? Do you have the same daily habits in terms of the way you take care of your body? Or are you trying to do things that'll help alleviate some of this pain? And we'll get into more things that, honestly, I think you, you have to do if you choose to take on any physical endeavor and you choose to take it on for a long time because there's a difference between yeah, I want to do powerlifting versus I want to do powerlifting from now until the time I die. There's a different level of self-care you must have if that's actually a goal you want to have. How often have you practiced <laughs> jujitsu or gone to practice um, with like a, a pretty good injury? Mm, uh, so if, if an injury happened, then I would typically take a few days off. Like recently I, I did something to I my... That's, I think that's rare. Yeah, but... I think a lot I, of people don't do that. Mm -hmm. But when I do have that injury, when I do take a few days off, I usually come into the gym and I'll do things to get blood flow to that area. So it's not like I'll just sit down and do nothing, but I will address it so that mm -hmm. I can get back to rolling. But some people, if an injury happens, I'll see them in the gym rolling the next day like, ah, it's not a mm -hmm. big deal. And then the injury gets worse and worse and worse until it turns into something where they're out for months. Or they end up with something else. Exactly. Exactly. And he, he was going to mention more things, actually, yeah. I think. Keep it rolling. Fingers hurt because I train a lot of gi. There's a lot of grip breaking, oh, very similar to judo. Brutal. You're grabbing collars, you're grabbing sleeves, and it's very bad on your fingers. A lot of old school jujitsu guys who trained a lot of gi have arthritis in their fingers. My elbows are screwed up from being arm barred too many times. Well, one more injury that I forgot about was my chest. I was born with a birth defect where I have kind of a concave chest. And one time when I was training, I was training with a much bigger guy who's probably closer to 300 pounds. And he He's a black belt now, but at the time I think he was a brown belt. And I was just about to get my purple belt at that time, but we were training takedowns and I don't remember the exact toss that he caught me with, but it was some kind of judo throw, hip toss. And he landed on me in side control. But when I landed, I was kind of on my side like that. And he kind of landed on me, which caused my chest and my sternum to go like that. And I felt it like right down the crack, the parts of your ribs that connect. And it was the worst pain I had ever felt <sighs> in my life. And to this day, this happened years ago. I Can can't pause sleep it for a second. Have either one of you guys ever had the wind knocked out of you? I remember specifically high school <laughs> in soccer. This guy, uh, he was pissed at us on the field. He was on the opposing team. So a ball was coming and I was about to receive it with my chest <sighs> and he just decided to spear me. Oh. <laughs> so he, he acted like he was going for the ball, but his head literally hit my sternum. And I was, I and you're was like, fucked. you can't breathe. And you're like, just, you're on the ground and you're like, just, you, you're moving around and you're like, not sure what happened. I was on the ground for a minute. It's yeah, yeah, terrifying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was watching uh, Quarterbacks, uh, the show that has uh, Kirk Cousins and Mahomes and following a bunch of the NFL uh, elite. And there was a, a video or there was a shot uh, to Kirk Cousins that made him get the wind knocked out of him. And he's just like rolling around on the ground and uh, the defensive lineman that smashed him like smacks him on the butt and he's like, you'll be okay. <laughs> and he's like, but I wasn't okay. <laughs> and uh, Andy was like, what happened to him? And I was explaining to her, I was like, has that ever happened to you? And she's like, no. I'm like, oh, mm. I just think some of this meathead stuff that's happened to me is like just super common and that everyone's had this happen before, but it's, you can't take another breath. Mm-hmm. Like that's what it is. You, the wind gets knocked out of you. You you don't know when your next breath is going to come. And it takes, it seems like it takes a long time, but it probably literally only takes like 10 to 30 seconds or so. or so, <sighs> And then you start to be able to breathe more normal, but it's very terrifying for a minute. Yeah. I, every time we have a, uh, like a, a 
breathing expert or whatever you want to call them, breath mm-hmm. expert on, I want to ask them that. And I always forget because like, what the heck are you supposed to do? Because it, it say it, put your arms over your head, but it doesn't, it doesn't seem to help. do anything. No. Like, and it, it, it may be only, you know, 10, 30 seconds or whatever, but as a kid and you're freaking out, like, dude, I can't get oxygen. Mm-hmm. It's the worst. I've actually gotten it multiple times happen to me, like slipping and falling on my back, like mm-hmm. flat on the back, like back in the day, like uh, skating and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, it sucks. I hate that feeling. Or like, yeah, soccer getting getting the, getting the ball kicked like right on the top, like that your uh, whatever that's called, like right below your ribs. Mm. Like, <gasps> like, oh gosh, yeah, it's yeah, brutal. Don't, don't like it. Okay, on my side, my wife makes fun of me because <laughs> I sleep like Dracula. You know, I sleep like this straight because if I don't sleep straight, I wake up with a hurt neck or a hurt back or a hurt chest. Because if I sleep in the fetal position or on my side, I mean, it is such an excruciating pain that it wakes me up. And then I get up and I have to like stretch and it hurts. And I've gone to the doctor for it. It's been x-rayed. It's cartilage damage from what they assume I have not gotten an MRI because my doctor was pretty much like, Hey man, it's kind of like a rib injury. When it rains or when it's about to rain or it gets a little cold out, everything in my body starts hurting. And now a couple of days ago, I, I told my wife, I was like, I don't know if I can keep doing this. It's like this thing that I love so much would say saved my life, even though mm. it's this corny ass saying that a lot of people used to say and Pause. they put it on T-shirts. Before we continue with this, like, I mean, uh, would it be corny for any of us to say that like, lifting and strength training is something that has like mm-hmm. it's been life altering for me mm-hmm. and I'm, i mean i'm lucky i started when i was 13 but like it's it's been life altering yeah, just the habit and understanding mm-hmm. what it can do for you and yeah. understanding how it can take like the the resilience it can give you to do everything else mm-hmm. i i think that's it's quite literally been life altering for all of us mm-hmm. yeah definitely um saved my life is an interesting you know term because it, i didn't need to be saved from anything mm-hmm. I grew up with great parents and I grew up in a nice home and I, I, I didn't have an afflicted life, but there are people that have afflicted lives that get into fighting and that get into jujitsu and you see it, you see it quite often and, and with, uh, fitness, especially powerlifting, you know, you see the guys that mm. like it, like if they can't power lift, it's, it's not a good outcome. If mm-hmm. they can't do jujitsu, it's not a good outcome. Like they're, it literally maybe in some cases kind of has saved some of these people's lives or, or been something that gave them the disciplines to, uh, I guess, fight off other situations in life to make themselves feel better. Yeah, mm-hmm. when, I remember when I, and I remember when I did start lifting. It was because I got injured from soccer and I got depressed. Mm-hmm. So when I started lifting, that was the thing that like my my mom was super happy afterwards because. When I got injured from soccer, I wasn't the same kid. I wasn't chatty. I was quiet. I didn't like talking to my friends anymore, and I was fucking up in school. But I got into the gym, and that outlet literally changed my trajectory. I know 100%. So, Andrew, you're about to say something? Yeah. No, um, when I say that lifting <gasps> saved my life, I don't necessarily – like, I, I don't know what, where I would have ended up, but – you know, you guys heard like the, where I came from, like being heavy drinker, being very depressed, like being upset. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I'm not saying like I would have committed suicide or anything like that because I just I don't know. But the the life that people know me from the podcast, like the people that are watching or listening to this, like this life was saved with because of fitness, because mm-hmm. I was going this direction and then I started lifting and I literally, you know, I met somebody through lifting you know, or exercise, fitness, whatever you want to call it that helped put me in the right position to meet Mark. And then, you know, now all this stuff has happened. Yeah. So like, yes, it absolutely saved my life. Like no question about it. It's, it's, yeah, it's wild. What a different uh, trajectory I was on before lifting. Gotcha. Yeah. Right now I know you're looking in the mirror. You're getting ready for your nephew's quinceanera. You have a long sleeve on that looks horrible and your pants don't fit right. <laughs> That's why we partnered. I don't know why you're laughing. That's why we partnered with Viore Clothing. You see, this is the Boulevard shirt jacket. Fits great, stretchy. Feels amazing. It's the best long sleeve in my closet. And one of the biggest things that we love about Viore is that they have clothes that you can wear to parties. They have clothes that you can wear in the gym. Like I said, your nephew's quinceanera. <laughs> you can look great wherever you go if you step your fashion game up. Plus, this stuff feels like baby skin on your skin, which is kind of creepy, but at the same time, it's kind of nice and you know it. Andrew, where can they get it? <laughs> yes, yeah, so you guys got to head over to viori.com slash power project. That's V U O R I dot com slash power project to automatically receive 20% off your order. Links to them down in the description as well as the podcast show notes. Fucking hell. <laughs> 
t-shirts that it was like, jujitsu saved my life. Unless you are in the middle of a fight where someone <laughs> is about to kill you and you use jujitsu to save your life, jujitsu doesn't save your life. But for me at least, it helped a lost 28 year old who never really stuck with anything and never had much ambition and drive. It helped me find that in me. And in a weird way, I feel like I owe a lot of my success to the fact that I started training jujitsu because there's something about going in and just getting beat up day in and day out and sticking with it and not seeing a lot of progress for a while. Through that, it showed me that if I continued doing something, no matter how hard it was, and I stuck with it, that I would eventually get better at it and that I could actually get good at it. And I felt that I was good at jujitsu. I still feel that I'm decent. As I get older, it gets harder. And now I train with some young guys and I'm, I can't even keep up with them. It's tough. It is a combat sport that you can't really fake the funk on. What led me to wanting to make this video was that a lot of people have asked about it because I've mentioned jujitsu throughout a lot of my videos. And I've, you know, gave a lot of credit to jujitsu for helping me get to where I'm at. While I do credit jujitsu for quote unquote, saving my life and giving me some direction when I was a lost 20 something year old and helping me understand what I know now from having grit and sticking it out when things get tough. And that helped me learn how to code, helped me with my YouTube channel. It helped me with a lot of things, just so many aspects of my life that I apply that same mentality to. At this point, although it helped save my life, it's destroyed my body. And as okay. I approach that big 4 0, as I approach that over the hill mark, I feel like I don't know if I can keep going, but I'm still still doing it. I'm just one serious injury left in me before I decide to call it quits. That's he's, really interesting. Yeah, he's compelling, if nothing else. I mean, like, I want to listen to more of it because he's like, uh, I don't know, making some like interesting points. But, you know, I think um, it's really easy to adopt this idea that you're over the hill. But imagine like, um, I, I don't know what his situation is with, jiu-jitsu but imagine if he just went to a, a jiu-jitsu academy that's like all people that are like 40 plus and they all are fucking amazing like it might change his outlook right uh everyone's 40 plus there's people that are 50 there's people that are 60 they're in great shape their bodies aren't banged up it might kind of open up his mind and say oh wait a second maybe um the other thing is too with the amount of pain that he's describing um I don't really know who this guy is, um, but he, he might need to like look into his diet a little bit. He might need to look into getting some blood work done because um, just going around uh, with that amount of pain, uh, obviously it could just be from the training and it could be from him uh, just wanting, just uh, really wanting to get better and yeah. him wanting to show up day in and day out and kind of push through. Uh, all those things could be factors, but uh you should probably kind of get some of that checked out because it sounds like he's in a lot of pain, which can be super annoying. Mm -hmm. That and, you know, if you're somebody who wants to do bodybuilding, you want to do powerlifting or jujitsu, it's, it's great to get into those activities. And specifically with strength training, building muscle is going to help you, you help your body to be more overall resilient. But if you're doing those things over and over, you know, with all the guests that we've had on, if anything, we've learned that you need to have good hygiene for your body. Like you can do all these activities to strengthen your body or jujitsu in terms of, you know, doing the martial art and getting better at that. But if you're not doing things to strengthen your body as a martial artist, if you're not doing things in the gym, you can't expect to be able to do it for a long time because your body's not strong. Your body's not resilient. And there's going to be a day where maybe you pull something and you don't know how to handle it or, or, you know, you, you, you just get into these random situations where your body is not strong enough to handle the stress of that martial art or in lifting, you get into a situation where you're, you lack mobility in certain areas and things start to hurt, but you keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. And if you want to do it for a long time, you have to do the things of myofascial release, you probably want to do some stretching. You probably don't want to be sitting all day long. You want to do a few things just so that your body is primed to be able to do these activities for years. And uh, building resilience through lifting, right? You know, and building up some bone density. And I, I don't know if, uh, are you aware if this guy like lifts and stuff like that too? I, uh, going through the video, I don't see lifting as being a big part of his routine or strength training. Um, but that's, again, that's another thing that you see from a lot of people who do jujitsu or a lot of martial arts in general. They, not many of them take strength training seriously. 
And then, you know, it's not really a surprise if you get injured often when you're not doing things to strengthen those different body parts mm -hmm. other than jujitsu. Right. You're going to be brittle. You're physically going to be weak. <laughs> so there's mm -hmm. no way you're going to be able to maintain that until you're, until you're much older. Do you remember, Nsima, if you felt like more wrecked at, let's say, blue and purple belt as opposed to brown belt? I know that's like a very easy question to say like, well, of course I did, but I'm just, I'm asking that because I'm wondering if he and many, many others treat themselves and their bodies the exact same way as they did when they were a white belt, fresh, feeling no pain, and they go hard and then they get some injuries and then again at blue belt they still go hard and they haven't quite learned how to um what's that term again um right like self-regulate their bodies and stuff mm -hmm. like oh, an auto regulator auto regulate there you go yeah um i know that when i started because everything was foreign i had the same type of pain that every white belt has like my ribs and I'd be super sore because all the movements were in things mm -hmm. I'd be getting in. Um, I'd have little tweaks here and there because my, like, you know, I, my, I wasn't bending like that ever mm -hmm. until I started jujitsu. But, you know, the one thing that I did have throughout the whole time was I, I came from a strength training background. And uh, when it came to injuries, I didn't just keep going. Like, when I, I, I injured my meniscus from something that happened in jujitsu, and then I ended up getting part of that meniscus removed. But, you know, I rehabbed that. I came back to jujitsu and then I, you know, when we had Ben Patrick in, started doing a lot of stuff to help my knee range of motion. My knees used to hurt. Just like mm -hmm. he said, he said his knees always mm -hmm. hurt. Well, after Ben came in and I started doing a lot of things with my, like working in deep knee bending, doing all of that, my knees don't hurt at all anymore. So that, with a lot of these things where he said his back hurts, his fingers hurt, his whatever, a lot of things used to hurt more years ago for me that don't hurt at all anymore. I used to always tweak my lower back. My lower back feels amazing now and I never tweak it because I've been doing a lot of things with range in my lower back. So these aren't things, that's why like the title of the video, Jiu Jitsu Saved My Life But Destroyed My Body, I think is, is misleading because it's not Jiu Jitsu that destroyed this man's body. It's potentially his actions or lack thereof when it came to potentially injury prevention. Sometimes, you know, you never know what's going to happen when you roll with somebody, but you can always choose the people you roll with. So if you don't feel comfortable rolling with someone who's much bigger, don't roll with them, you know, tap early. I don't, I'm not saying he didn't tap early or anything, but like in many situations, jujitsu is one of those things where it's like, if you don't tap, sometimes you'll get injured, tap early. But I think that with a lot of people, it's not having the hygiene of your body that's going to allow you to get injured. It's not powerlifting injured you or jujitsu injured you. It's a lack of awareness for what you should be doing outside of the mats or outside of the gym. I think you got to said the magic word, like awareness. I think this is a knowledge-based thing, you know. Um, there's almost al almost always a uh, an answer to try to find uh, whatever the thing is that's like really bothering you. You know, you have a, a book right in front of you by our buddy Chris Kodowski, um, we're constantly looking at books. We're constantly, uh, trying new, uh, lifts. We're always like buying or purchasing new things, like whether it's for our feet or our fingers or, uh, our neck or whatever. You, there's like all this stuff around us all the time where we're always trying to explore. And that doesn't mean that we're immune to anything and we can uh -huh. still make mistakes and we could still, and, uh, you know, doing, doing a sport where you have to deal with, uh, doing a sport where you have to deal with somebody else's energy is a really interesting thing. Um, someone could just pick up the tempo more so than they normally do. And you could be shocked or surprised by that where you're like, Whoa, like John's not usually that explosive. And you could like tweak yourself before he even touches you just by you moving and reacting the way that he moved, you could hurt yourself. And then plus you're dealing with uh, somebody else's force and everything like that. But you know, this idea and this mentality of, you know, going hard and just saying F it, I'm going to go in kind of, you know, when you're already banged up, you just have to be careful of that. You have to be really conscious, conscious of what it is that you're doing. You know, I have the video, the fuck your elbow video <laughs> where I was talking about, you know, people at that time talked so much about the CNS and you got to recover and, and all this. And I was just kind of mentioning that the, the guy that, uh, uh, you know, said that like you're stupid and 
I can't believe you're still training through these injuries and stuff. I was just saying that he was um, utilizing science as an excuse not to exercise, you know, <laughs> uh, trying to say that you have to recover and all these things. And I do think there's times where you do have to sometimes put certain things aside. Like I was in the middle of my powerlifting career at that time. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I was willing to make the sacrifices. Um, I was willing to go for it. But what ultimately ended my powerlifting career was my elbow. <laughs> <laughs> and my elbow still bugs me here and there. It's, an, it's annoying. So you get to kind of pick and choose these things. I, my choice was to kind of ignore that and to plow forward. And I did some great lifts. I'm really proud of what I did in powerlifting. Um, but there's, you know, I also made some sacrifices. Maybe, now that's a kind of a, a small sacrifice because it's not like my arm is messed up or anything. It's just, I get a little pain in my elbow every once in a while. So mm -hmm. I think a lot of people would be like, shit, I'd be able to trade that out because I'm still able to run. I'm still able to do a lot of things. But again, I think this is a knowledge-based problem. And even what happened to me was a knowledge-based problem. I didn't have the ability at that time to zoom out. You know, and I wish I, wish I kind of did um, because if I just zoomed out, I could have talked to you guys and could, we could have said, hey, you know, to get that 600 pound bench, why don't you just take, why don't we just take like six months? Let's rehab your shoulders and stuff. You know, you, you've torn your pec a bunch of times. Your shoulders don't rotate well enough and you don't have the proper mobility um, for you to be able to handle these huge weights. That's why you end up tearing your pecs. That's why the, and a lot of pain ends up in the elbows. Let's, let's take an approach where we take six months to like recover. Let's get all this pain, all this junk out of your system, out of your body. And then after those six months, let's plan on a competition that's six months down the road from there. Mm -hmm. And let's really attack this thing with all the knowledge that we have. Kelly Sturette, Jesse Burdick, all the great people with Matt Wenning, all the great people that we know and have around us. Let's utilize all of our resources and then go try to bench 600 pounds. Now what's going to happen? In that in that video though, you had said something like along the lines of like we're all gonna die anyway. <laughs> uh, can you reiterate and explain what you were meaning by that? Yeah, pain's coming our way no matter what, you know. And there's there's most likely you know um, you go through life for a long period of time, and all of a sudden your finger doesn't move the same way as it used to. Yep. Uh, your elbow <laughs> doesn't move the same way. Um, and Sima had to have part of his that. foot shaved off because of soccer or whatever, right? <laughs> I mean, there's uh, there's all these weird things that happen. My dad will come to me every once in a while, and he's like, "Look, I can't move my wrist anymore." He's like, "I don't know what's happening." You know, just just something strange. You know, he's like 75 or whatever. And so, uh, yeah, pain is coming our way, and you may as well live your life like a savage. You might as well put your best foot forward and try try your hardest at things. But you do have to be level headed at the same time. You know, um, we were mentioning Casio. Um, and Cassio is an amazing instructor and he's been a world champion before. For those of you who don't know, he's the jujitsu instructor at Cassio Wernick in Sacramento. So, and you know, he has a little bit of trouble moving his, uh, left shoulder or whatever it is, uh, up over his head. It's like, well, let's, he was a jujitsu champion for a really long time. And now there's other people that are his age. I think he's around 50 something, right? Early 50. Yeah. Yeah, he's in his early 50s. Other people that are in their early 50s that can't move their arm anyway, that weren't really participating in high-level jujitsu. So, um, you know, again, let's back to the kind of the more the topic, though, of, of, of what this guy is experiencing. I don't think to be a purple belt in jujitsu that you have to really uh, destroy your body. Like this guy is kind of making it seem like a permanent thing. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, there's been a lot of other purple belts um, that haven't destroyed their body. So what's the difference? Was it because you were trying to do it in a, a certain period of time? Um, is this guy's body maybe a little fragile um, going into it and he didn't manage it? Like, um, I'm just kind of imagining just by looking at the guy and just by hearing some of his descriptions, um, I'm thinking right away this guy kind of has like digestive issues. Um, and maybe he has like a, maybe his bone density isn't like up to par and some strength training along with proper nutrition. I think I'm just, I totally made that up, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I've been around the block a bunch of times and I've seen that, uh, many, many times before. Yeah. You know, it's, it's really interesting because I think that when you're choosing to go down any of these routes, there are certain things that you just 
have to do. If you want to do jujitsu, I think at this point you have to strength train. Like what are the ways that are, are going to help you build bone density over time? Running can help you build bone density because of the constant hitting. You probably need to be eating enough food mm -hmm. so that your body can create new bone, create new muscle tissue. So you have to have your diet in check. But what's the other biggest thing that's going to help you build bone density? Strength training, resistance training. That's going to allow your body to be stronger. And if you're only doing jujitsu or you're only doing grappling, you're missing out on these things that are going to help you live a longer, more productive life. Because you know that after a certain age, people will just start to lose a little bit of muscle and a little bit of bone if they're not doing anything to upkeep it, mm. like strength training or running or boxing or whatever. If you're not doing anything, you're just going to waste away. So you can't expect to do something like jujitsu for a long time. This physically contact sport that you're going to be doing with against other people, you can't expect to only do that mm. for the rest of your life and, and have longevity. You can't do that. Um, there's also the aspect of like having, um, doing some myofascial release mm -hmm. for different parts of your body, because a lot of like, that's something that's a habit that we've picked up, but that's something that, you know, if you're, if you don't do that at all, you might not think it's very important because a lot of people, especially within the strength training community have been like, Oh, it's not important to foam roll or whatever. But mm -hmm. if there's anything we learned, like this guy, Chris Kadaski, who made this book, Myofascial relief helps with so many different things as far as movement's concerned and can help you move better and feel better and get out of pain. But if you're not doing any, any of those things to help you get out of pain, then you're missing out on a lot. And then there's also the aspect of the feet. Mm. You know, I've had foot injuries a few times before I started, like a few years ago, I had multiple foot injuries um, before I started understanding how beneficial, like just being barefoot and strengthening the feet were. And since I've strengthened my feet, I've had no, I've had no foot and ankle injuries since mm. because that is dealt with. And a lot of us, our daily life puts our bodies in a situation where the body is fragile going into whatever we choose to do. Mm -hmm. If you're wearing normal shoes, if you're not getting good sleep, if you're sitting most of your day, and then you choose to go lift in the gym or you choose to go do jujitsu, you're taking this body that's already fragile and that's already not in the greatest mm -hmm. spot. And you're putting it into a situation where you're doing all these dynamic things. You can't expect not to get injured if you if you treat yourself that way. Yeah, and the the way he was talking about his knees, it reminds me of you know powerlifters with their shoulder. It's like, well, okay, you how many how many times a week are you benching? It's like you know whatever two three, three. times. Yeah, it's like maybe could we go a week or two without? <clears throat> and right, Mark, they tell you all the time, like, no, I can't <laughs> do that. So when he's talking about his knees, and then like the clip of him doing uh, looks like no gi. It's like, oh, dude, maybe throw on some knee sleeves a couple times a week or like do something different because it's it's not working right now, right? My knees were bugging me a little bit. I did wear some of the slingshot knee sleeves for a little bit just because I didn't want to go away from jujitsu, like which I should have taken some time off. Uh, the pain started to, to dissipate because I got used to uh, kind of jujitsu movements. He's a purple belt, so he doesn't need to get used to it. He's already there, but... It's just a lot of dudes will just keep banging their head against the brick wall waiting for the wall to break. And it's like, well, dude, I don't know. I'd maybe try something different. What do you guys think are some non-negotiables as far as like <clears throat> upkeep of your body? Things that you like, because like there's, like, there's always going to be the person that like maybe they comment, you know what? You guys have all this time to do all these things. Mm -hmm. Most people don't have this time. But at the end of the day, with whatever physical thing that you're trying to do, if you don't upkeep your body, you will not be in it in the next mm -hmm. 10 years. So no matter how much time you have, you owe it to yourself to do the things to take care of mm -hmm. yourself so you can do these things until you're old and gray. I hate to sound like a broken record, but your sleep quality most likely sucks. Aww. It's one of the biggest things that we talk about <laughs> on the podcast. So many guests have come on and talked about how sleep can help you stick to your diet, stick to your workout plan, lose body fat, gain muscle, all the good things that you're trying to do, but it's hard to do because you might be snoring. And if you're snoring, that's why we've partnered with Hostage Tape, which is mouth tape that you can put over your nose your mouth when you're asleep to help you stop snoring and breathe through your nose. But if you have been breathing through your nose this whole time while you've been sleeping, it's going to be a little bit difficult to get air through there. That's also why hostage tape has nose strips to help open up your nasal airways and make it easier to breathe through your nose when you're asleep. Now your partner won't be having a 
talk with you when you're asleep because you'll be actually breathing through your nose. Andrew, how can they get it? Yes, that's over at hostagetape.com slash power project where you guys will receive an entire year supply of nasal strips and mouth tape all for less than a dollar a night. Again, that's at hostagetape.com slash power project. Links in the description as well as the podcast show notes. I think the <clears throat> like non-negotiable stuff is just just really analyze, you know, a- analyze it's unacceptable not to analyze your body and how you feel. So if you did a hard jujitsu session or you did a hard run or something and you go into the gym and you go to like warm up mm-hmm. and you go to do something and you're like, man, okay, that was just a lap pull down and that really hurt. And it, you know, kind of hurts like your clavicle or something you're like, man, that's weird. Mm-hmm. And then you try to do like dumbbell bench pressing. And you're like that same spot freaking <clears throat> kills. And then you're like, okay, well I'll try back. And you pull on something, and you're like, shit. It's like, well, now you're just faced with, you have to completely change the workout that you had in mind. Maybe mm. you were going to do pull up, maybe you're going to do like weighted pull ups, and you were going to get after it, and you were going to do some deadlifts, and you had this whole thing in your head that you were going to kill it in the gym. Well, now you have to shift gears and you have to do something completely opposite of what it was that you're going to do. This is why I really strongly suggest that people stop taking pre-workout before they go to the gym and only maybe have pre-workout with them in case they actually need it. Because if you actually start lifting, you'll find that you probably don't even need the pre-workout because mm-hmm. you'll be excited by the lifting itself anyway. But you're going to have to probably shift your your lifting for that day into a session where you do some myofascial release. You're going to have to... Um, you know, dig out some stuff in your traps um, with whatever objects that you can find, whatever way that you can do it. Um, we have a bunch of videos on the Super Training uh, YouTube channel, so you can check some of that out. And there's, you can just look up myofascial release for your neck, and you can find a bunch of different uh, different people showing you different ways of doing it. You can pick up Kelly Sturette's book. Like, there's tons of information on uh, what is it, becoming a supple leopard, right? Yeah, becoming a supple leopard. Yeah, becoming a supple leopard right there. Like we're surrounded by this stuff and we're fortunate to know some of these people and stuff too. Um, They had a huge impact on us, but why have they had a huge impact on us? They've had a huge impact on us because these things actually work. They're really productive. So it's pretty simple. Like I would just say, don't be an idiot. You know, if you go to do something and you're like, man, that really hurts. Um, I just know even just, even just from being sore, if you're really sore, it compromises. If you're really sore, you did a really hard leg session. Mm -hmm. Well, um, how do you go downstairs? How do you go down steps sideways (laughs) (laughs) holding the railing? And you're like, you're, you're, you're like, am I good? You're like, fuck. Mm -hmm. Normally you just fly right down the stairs. Mm -hmm. No problem. You know, going up the stairs, fly right up the stairs, no no issue, getting up out of a chair. So now with these really sore legs, you're actually going to go to jujitsu or go to football practice or whatever. It's like, dude, (laughs) there's, there's just no reason to do that. Like, there's not a good reason to do that. Like if you want to get better at something, um, that's not a great way to go about doing it. Like your coordination, everything's compromised. I know that you would say like, oh, but I got to push through. I got to push through. Maybe, but the the likelihood of you ending up with an injury or the likelihood that you're compromising your recovery even further and you're making yourself so uncomfortable that it's probably going to be difficult to sleep is really, really high. And you have to pay attention to that stuff. You can't just deep water everything. You can't just swim out and have no plan on how the fuck you're going to get back. Mm -hmm. And and one thing, not going to go steep enough, but you cannot compromise your sleep. Mm -hmm. If you're an athlete that wants to recover, if you want to learn things at a faster pace, you can't be... You know, not like you have to get eight hours a night, but you can't be trying to get four hours a night. You know what I mean? And and getting up and trying to go do jujitsu and then lift. You can't be doing that shit. You're just gonna run yourself into a wall. So you have to be. You have to have good recovery if you even if be able you to do can anything. do it. You can. You're probably only gonna be do it, able to do it for now for so long, <laughs> right? And that's yeah. that's what sucks because how long does it take to be a black belt? Long time. <laughs> takes a long time. It's going to take a long time. More than 10 years for most people. To yeah. be to be good at anything, it takes about 10 years. Literally takes about 10 years to be mm-hmm. proficient at anything. Anybody that um, is in business, any I mean, there's people like that pick up some really good things in the first couple of years that they, they're doing something, but it almost always takes, you know, normally what happens is you get to year 10. Like by the time you get to year 10 in jujitsu, you're going to be like, I don't know fucking shit. <laughs> <laughs> 
you're already there. <laughs> like, yeah, you know what I mean? Like you, you've, you've gone to a bunch of different spots where you're like, oh, this is kind of cool. I know a lot. Mm-hmm. And then you're like, wait a second, I don't know anything. And then you're like, I don't, <laughs> you keep going back and forth, back and forth uh, between those things. And I was just telling you this morning, like I'm figuring out how to use my lats. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like <laughs> I know how to use them kind of for pushing, for benching, but it's always been kind of confusing for me with uh, back exercises. Obviously I know how to like, you know, get the muscles to flex. Um, but there's some intricacies in there that are complex. They're complicated. And I've been lifting for 30 years and I'm still learning shit. Mm-hmm. I think one thing that might be a non-negotiable and it's, it's, I don't think it's abstract at all, but it's moving your body in different ways, not just in jujitsu, but maybe with load, like, you know, in, in the gym, we're always focused on keeping the spine neutral and keeping rigid with almost everything that mm-hmm. you do. But I think you do have to figure out a way to let your body bend and move in a few different ways. Um, because especially if you're doing something like jujitsu, which is a bunch of dynamic abs- movements that aren't coordinated. Well, if all the other movements you do everywhere else are super coordinated and super rigid, and then you try to take yourself to a place where you're moving around a lot, you're, you're not going to fare well long term. I think that you should figure out a way to, like, just like we had Kador on, right? Figure out a way to mm-hmm. sit in different ways, put pressure in different parts of your feet, your knees, your shoulders, get, move. And, and it's all, it's, again, it's like hygiene. It's like brushing your teeth or flossing your teeth. You need to get your body in different positions and you need to learn how to be comfortable in those positions. And I think that that's something that will help somebody be able to do things for a very long term so that their body isn't. I don't want to use this term because we think of muscle confusion, but their body isn't confused when it does get put into a weird mm. position. Mm. It's like the thing that you saw in quarterbacks. I think you'll be able to mention it better than me, but with, uh, what's his name? Mahomes? Mm. Mm. What, what is it that you saw in quarterbacks and the, the way that his, his yeah. coach was talking yeah, Mahomes about? Is, Mahomes' is head, he's able to keep his head almost like an owl. He can like really fixate on something and move his body in a completely mm. different direction. Mm. And then he can also, he could like look at Andrew and keep his head fixated on Andrew and chuck the ball to Encima while he's like running to his left. He could throw to his right while he's running to his left, while he's looking at someone to his left because he can see the whole field Yeah. because his uh, the way his neck, uh, the mobility of his neck is just so awesome and the mobility of his, um, of his hips. Mm-hmm. And then he was a former baseball player and he can actually swing a baseball bat. The only discrepancy between his left side and right side when he swings a baseball bat is 3% uh, strength loss, which normally for most people, it's like 20 or 30%. Yeah. Um, he's just like, he, he's not just a mutant. He's not just um, a genetic anomaly. He's been training with this same guy since fourth grade. Mm-hmm. So he, he's been training all these things. And then you saw all the movements they were doing. But I think he, his coach mentioned something specifically about putting Patrick in the positions yeah. that he's typically, most people would not be comfortable in so that when he's on the field and if he gets tackled or put in any of these positions, it's not something foreign to his body. So I think that's something that that coach mentioned. And when he said that, I'm like, that makes total sense. If you're moving in just one single direction and way in the gym, and then your body does something somewhat dynamic in life or in jujitsu, you cannot expect that that movement will not f- mess with you somehow. Right. So you somehow need to figure out ways to get your bodies in those positions and be comfortable there so that y- there's nothing that catches you off guard. Andrew, it was pretty sick. They had him going through, they had Mahomes going through these ranges of motion. As he's going through these ranges of motion and what would maybe be considered like sports specific movements, um, the guy is also having him having Mahomes like rub the inside of his leg on these like rollers where you're just like, oh my God, that must hurt so bad. But he's having him do a skillful movement while he's doing that. And he's talking about how it can build up a lot of tissue resilience. But mm. it's like, I think he had one thing where his yep. hip was right here and he had Patrick moving in these different directions and moving his head and his spine while smashing his inner leg. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> right? A lot going on. But that, that, that's, again, that's dynamic movement and able, you're able to control your body in so many different ways in space. Imagine how useful that is versus only doing it one way. Yeah, and, and it, I believe it shows when he plays because when he plays, he, the, the plays that he makes are, are like similar to what, like what we would do on like playing football in the street. Yeah. Like I'm running this way, like, oh, just kidding. And I throw it right over your head to like, you know, my teammate or whatever. And, and he, he practices that a lot. And you don't see other, you know, quarterbacks doing that because, right, they're, they're more on the one, two, three step throw. They're not jumping around left and right, you know, so that's, mm-hmm. that's pretty cool. Yeah. 
I guess if I had some non-negotiables and, you know, we have at this point thousands of hours of really good habits that are basically all non-negotiables, but one would be to like, I guess what you were kind of saying, Mark, um, being smart, but like check your ego. Uh, how many times have mm-hmm. people co- come into the gym and saying like, ah, oh, you know, my whatever is a little banged up. I'm going to take it easy. Pre-workout hits, the beat drops. The next thing you know, they're going for a PR. It's like, dude, you said you were not feeling right. What are you doing? See it in jujitsu. Like, oh yeah, today's going to be a little bit light. And then ding, the bell rings. And it's like, you are going 110% after <laughs> you just said you were going to take it easy. Yeah. That leads to like what this guy was saying with his knees and stuff. It's like that one injury is now, you know, it's multiplied, you know, and then it's going to get worse and worse if you don't address this. But what happens is once it's over and like, damn, I, that was a mistake. I shouldn't do that again. And then somebody challenges you or the program that your coach writes out for you is going to, you know, challenge you. And you see that and you're like, yeah, I'm gonna, I can do that. It's like, or you can take a step back and be like, no, I'm going to take the recovery instead. Stuff that Mark, you've told me many times, like, hey, I dare you to take one day off of jujitsu instead of, you know, killing yourself. And go do something else that's really hard. You know what I mean? Like maybe go do something else that's, Maybe it's a cold plunge. Like maybe you're like, I don't want to get into fucking 37 <laughs> degree temperature water, but maybe that's the hard thing that you do for the day. Or or maybe it's like lifting because mm-hmm. jujitsu is kind of hurting at the moment or, or going on a tough run or something like that. I think that's something that, uh, you know, we've talked about the lifting and all these different ranges of motion. So there's, there's just so many ways to apply that in the gym. But something that I think is a useful tool for, especially for people that lift, and it, it, some people might laugh at this, but it's the rope flow. It's the rope flow stuff that, mm-hmm. that David Weck posts all the time because it may look a little bit funny like swinging a rope around and moving around, but the thing is that's going on with the body is the spine is rotating, it's flexing, it's extending, the arm is going behind the back. You're building these new ranges of motion and this new capacity to move in a circular path, mm-hmm. in a circular way. like. It, it's it's not going to put your body in all these positions, but it's going to get you in positions that you typically don't get in in the gym. And if you don't do something like jujitsu, you're typically not getting in at all. Mm. The rotational aspects of it, I think that's a really simple thing that you can just literally pick up a rope and learn to do it. And that's something that you could do on a break or fucking at home, or you could just go outside your house in the morning and move around with the rope a little bit. You're going to notice your shoulders, your spine, your hips. A lot of these things feel like they've been lubricated after you do something like a rope flow. Lubricated. Lube. Yeah. Yeah. Power Project family, we talk about eating meat all the time on this podcast. Pause. Pause. But sometimes you might want to eat some different meat. Pause. You might want to eat duck, chicken, (laughs) Japanese A5 Wagyu, you might want to change things up. That's why we've partnered with Good Life Proteins, which also has certified Piedmontese beef on their website. Now, all you have to do is head to goodlifeproteins.com and you can select build a box with all of the proteins that you want. Then you'll select subscribe and save to save money on all of your meat. Pause. Enter code POWERPROJECT to save an extra 5% on any subscription you select. So if you want to get your beef every two weeks, you'll be able to save 25% on all of your meat. Again, that's goodlifeproteins.com. Links are in the description along with the podcast show notes. And then also um, the, the follow through, right? Because I'm guilty of this big time where it's like, oh, this does hurt. I'm going to address it tomorrow or whatever it may be. Tomorrow comes and it's like, ah, I'll get to it later or whatever. Mm-hmm. The same amount of intensity that I put into jujitsu, I should be putting some of that. It's going to be hard to put all of that into recovery because it's not as fun and, you know, we don't get super fired up in the morning to go, you know, do some fascia release, but some of that intent and intensity should also follow through to the recovery side. Yeah. You know, cause it, it's, you can't have one without the other. That's the non-negotiable. How about that? Um, right. Like it, they're, they're not two different things. Training and recovery are not two separate things. They need to be one thing. You can't have one without the other. Yeah, dude. That's why I think it's again, and it's no shade on this guy specifically, but if somebody were to tell me powerlifting ruined my body or jujitsu ruined my body or whatever ruined my body, it's like, no, that's a cop out. You did. And, and don't get me wrong. I know random injuries can happen at any time with almost anything you do. I mean, fuck, it's horrible, but we just saw that influencer die squatting 400 pounds. It, it, the bar came down, his neck went down and it fucking severed his cervical spine. He didn't make it. He didn't. So like, 
anything can injure you, but at the same time, you got to think about how are you doing this? Because we have proof of people doing jujitsu into their 60s and 70s, bodybuilding into their 80s, powerlifting into their 80s. So we see people sprinting doing- Sprinting at 90. Sprinting <laughs> at 90. And some people are like, I'm never going to sprint because it's, it's, I'm going to pull something. It's too intense. But we got to think about why can't, why can't that be us? Is it because we're not built different? No, it's not because you're not built different. It's because you don't have the habits that these people have that have allowed them to do this for a long time. You don't. You don't have those habits. Mm -hmm. It's not because of the sport. It's because of you. So you have to build those habits. I think it's also, you know, sometimes difficult to control certain variables. The nice thing about training is you get to control almost all variables. If I am to come into the gym and to start to swing around a kettlebell, I can simply be like, oh, well, kettlebell swinging ain't happening today. Like <laughs> yeah. I, I can try to warm up and I can start with rope flow and do all these things. And I could still go to do the kettlebell and it's just not in the cards for the day for whatever reason. Maybe I did something a couple days ago and slightly tweaked something. It's mm -hmm. not going to work out. Um, but, you know, can I do some leg extensions, some leg presses, some lateral raises? Most likely, yes. And with strength training, <clears throat> you get to like brace yourself. You know, you get to kind of like hold tight, you know, in jujitsu, I know you guys are practicing so you can kind of, uh, you can go lighter and harder, but the variables are, are really hard, They're really difficult, especially again, like when the bell rings type thing, people like get fired up, get excited mm -hmm. and they want to start to do, do things that weren't scheduled. You know, you're like, oh, we were supposed to kind of work on this and now it's just turned into fucking mayhem. And you see the same thing can happen with, uh, with exercise too. But one of the great advantages of exercise is what I'm saying is um, this ability to brace yourself, to get yourself stable and rigid for a particular lift. So like if my, if my shoulder slightly hurts, I can probably find pressing movements that don't hurt my shoulder, yeah. as weird as that sounds. But if my shoulder hurts and I go to jujitsu, that's going to be a lot tougher for me to now I got to like try to fight Andrew, like in a totally different, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I got to, you know, maybe have my, my uh, right leg forward rather than my left. And it's just a lot of compromise and it's just something, it doesn't mean you have to be a pussy. It doesn't mean you can't just fight through stuff for the mental sake of fighting through stuff. Sometimes that is really beneficial. It's just be really conscious of it and pay attention to it and say, man, there is something going on with my left shoulder. I'm still going to go to practice today because I love practice and it's going to be a lot of fun and so-and-so is going to be there and I'm going to learn a lot. But I am going to tell the guys like something's going on with this thing. You know, I'm going to let people know, hey, you know, <laughs> you got to take it easy on me today. You can't beat me up as much as you normally do. And then address it later in the day. You know, do your, you know, get a ball in there and start to dig, dig that shit out with a lacrosse ball or something. And that's exactly, and the thing is, is like, the digging out that with a lacrosse ball or using a band and getting blood to the area or any of the things that, you know, will help you rehab those things. Those are things that you need. Like, like we mentioned, you need to get supple leopard. You need to get this book by Chris Godowski. You need to get Jill Miller who has the tune up fitness balls and she's all about that myofascial release. You need to seek some of these ideas out and you need to learn them because these are the things that are going to allow you to do this for a long time. You know, we had an athlete that came here. I'm not going to name him, but he had this hip injury and he, he was still doing his sport at a high, a high level, actually with the groin injury. He was still doing his sport at a high level with that injury. And I was somewhat surprised because I'm like, how are you? That's such a simple fix. Literally do this. Copenhagen's progresses slowly. You'll be out of the water there. And that pro that injury probably won't happen again. But s sometimes when things happen, people just barrel through it. Because mm -hmm. many people are just used to doing things with pain. And I don't think that we should, I don't think we should be used to doing things in pain. Mm. Like number one, you want to get out of pain, but you want to figure out how can I do this pain free? And that that's possible for everybody, but it takes work. It takes effort. It does take learning. And it's, it's, it's not something that's going to happen overnight. I know a lot of people, we, we, everybody has jobs, people have families, but this side of things is it's something that you have to learn how to take care of. You have to learn how to, you have to learn how to have hygiene for your body. It's, it's necessary. Mm -hmm. And you can I don't think you can be worried about what other people are going to say or think, you know, those guys, at the gym, man, they're going to make fun of me because I didn't show up on, you know, international Monday bench day. Mm -hmm. um, you can't worry about that. You have to, you have to be concerned about yourself and where you're at. And it's, it's not an easy thing to do. 
because you're you're concerned that like everyone else is going to make fun of you or talk shit or it, you just might even be beating yourself up. Pussy. And you also don't want to fall out of rhythm with stuff. You know, like oh, if, yeah. you, if you're in jujitsu and you normally go three days a week mm. and you just got so used to that or same thing with lifting, you're trying to make this commitment and you're like, man, I committed myself. I was going to lift every day and now, man, I, I, I should, I feel sick. I don't feel good. Like you just shouldn't go. Just, <laughs> just, <laughs> just don't go. The reason why I talk this way so much is I just, he, there's so many people that are falling apart. Like people are in so much pain and they just try to pass it off and they're just like going into the gym and doing another deadlift session. And I'm like, that, it, that is not effective. I've seen people work through stuff. I've seen people work around stuff and be pretty effective, but I've seen a much better result from those people that do take a step back and they say, let me take care of this. Look at Lane Norton. Mm. Lane Norton like could barely walk a few years ago. He was, he was in a really bad spot. His back was really jacked up. And now he's on the platform again competing. Yeah. He, he had to learn a lot of stuff. He had to understand, you know, there's some, some pains that you can train through and there's some that you can't. Um, and he went to some of the top people, got his back uh, fixed, not, not surgery, but rehabbed it. And now he's uh, back lifting like he was before. I mean, he, he was, uh, I think he was a silver medalist in the IPF. So that's unbelievable to be able to come back from that. And then also in that uh, quarterbacks show, Kirk Cousins, a, uh, a veteran quarterback said that he learned from Santana Moss, who was a receiver for the changed name team the, the in Washington. Washington. Commanders. <laughs> yeah, the Commanders. Not yeah. the Redskins, huh? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and uh, uh, he, learned, he learned from Santana. a little bit more Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> he learned from uh, Santana Moss that he had to, uh, you know, he had to spend as much time as he did on the field and learning the plays and all that stuff with training and recovery. And I think it was really well said, Andrew, what you said about uh, training and recovery being like one, one combined thing mm -hmm. and to kind of glob things even more together, your sleep and your food are part of that. Mm -hmm. Your sleep and your food are part of the recovery. If you're not sleeping well, it's going to be hard to train properly. And if you're not fueled properly, it's going to be hard to get the proper training in. If your food is messed up, it could also potentially mess up your sleep. Uh, if you're training too hard, training too hard, I, I think is like almost underrated on how much it can negatively impact your sleep. I don't know if you guys ever been just super sore and you're like just tossing and turning, like it's just the worst night of sleep ever. Mm -hmm. That still will happen to me sometimes on like these, these longer runs that I'll go on. And I'm just like, man, I'm, I'll pay the price for the next day or two, but I have to, in my head, I have, to, I have to keep all this in mind. I know I need more hydration. I know I need more food. I know that in the coming days, maybe on those days, I can't get the same sleep. And so maybe the next day or two after that, I can't train the same way. But then I need to get back into that pattern of getting to sleep in. And it's fucking pain in the ass trying to figure out all this stuff. But this is how it's working for me so far. Mm -hmm. Even the small aspect of, and it's not small actually, but not breathing into your diaphragm. I mean, <laughs> realize how many, like, and we, this, this is why we've done so many podcasts on breathing, because there's a, there's a lot of people who are very shallow breathers. Mm. Not only are they mouth breathers, but all their, all their breath is coming in here. Fuck so these people, man. I mean, but but <laughs> what does that do? That constantly makes you in a sympathetic or like you're, you're, you're always mm. tense without even realizing you're tense. Mm. You might be standing around breathing up here, but you don't even realize your body's at fucking high alert because the way you're breathing is putting you in that way. And your tissues are now tighter because you're constantly breathing up here and you're not getting that breath into your diaphragm. Something like that, now you're doing it during you, while you do jujitsu, you're doing breathing that way while you're lifting, you're breathing that way while you're sleeping, and your body's on constant high alert and you're never able to chill out even though you want to chill out. So something as simple as getting your breathing in check, this is something that can make a big difference for people, but you have to... <laughs> You have to realize what's happening, make the effort to fix it, use mouth tape at night so you're breathing through your nose, make the effort to breathe into your diaphragm. That will pay massive dividends mm -hmm. in the long run if you find that you're someone who is breathing in that way. Yeah, I, I didn't know how far deep into the weeds we wanted to get. Even though it's not weeds, it's just, it, it is a 24-7 thing. If you want to be good at something, it, you know, right, you mentioned sleep, you just mentioned diet. So it's like, what type of fuel are you giving your body? And then like, are you finding any deficiencies? Like, oh, you rolled like shit today. How much hydration did you have yesterday? <clears throat> That's right. I didn't have enough. 
And so it's like any little thing that you can turn the knob on to, you know, for the, on the positive side is going to help. And it, it can be frustrating if you're stuck and you're just like, fuck dude, literally like I can't take a break. It's like, well you can, but it's going to slow down the process a little bit. And that's, that's the part that I personally have a hard time with. Cause it's just like, fuck, like, here we go. It's going to be when Seema said 10 years till I'm good. And then when I'm there, I'm going to be like, I'm shitty. Like, oh my gosh, I haven't even gotten down year one yet. So it's, it's a long process, but like, yeah, I do want to be good. So I'm not going to eat some bullshit. I'm not going to drink. I'm going to try to get my sleep. And it's just, yeah, it's kind of like a never ending thing. <laughs> I do got to say though, real quick guys, like even though we've mentioned all this stuff, for us, these things have now just become habits. It is an all day thing, mm -hmm. but I think most of these things at this point, it's not an all day thing because it's just what we do. It's just, it's just the habits we have, the mm -hmm. breathing, oh, yeah. the sleeping, all, all these things are just, they're input habits today. They are not stressful at all. The stressful part is implementing it and having it become habitual. So your breathing becomes habitual. The way you move becomes habitual. Mm -hmm. Fucking being barefoot, moving around, moving in different ways, that just becomes habitual. But once it does, it's not work anymore. It's something that has a positive feedback loop because you realize that it's something that helps you continue to feel better and mm -hmm. better and healthier and healthier. Because you mentioned a few years ago, you were in certain amounts of pain. Mm -hmm. You're older, but now you're not. Yeah, I'm not in any pain. <laughs> so it's not I'm just- I'm in zero pain. Exactly. <laughs> it's not this thing where you get older and you get in more pain. You just need the right habits to get out of pain and you will maintain that until you're much older. I could have a little bit of pain from like particular movements or something like that. Like a little slight pain in my knee from like a lunge or like I said, my elbow. But it's like, again, it's usually like in the gym. It's usually like with a weight and it's usually just because I'm not warmed up. Mm -hmm. But other than that, I got like zero pain, which I think <laughs> is pretty interesting. And, and there's there have been other people. We have other models of people. There's people that are in their 60s. There's people that are in 70s that are in great shape. Um, we got people like Mark Sisson who competed at a super high level. Look at that penis. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Allie. This is like my favorite thing yeah, on the podcast right now. This little weenie, <laughs> weenie tip thing. It kind of reminds me. We should me interview of it. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hi. How you do it? <laughs> it kind of, the way he has it on the mic stand right there reminds me of uh, Worms, the video game. Oh, yeah. Hey, yo. <laughs> the fuck you talking about man <laughs> <laughs> things just gonna like dive off there and kill itself <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we're the worst oh, but yeah. she gave us those I mean, we can't be a, you know there's no way we can be adults about it fuck mm. no it's great no it's too weird yeah anyway i'm gonna shut the fuck up we're done yeah strength is never weak this week is never strength catch you guys later bye <laughs> If you guys enjoyed this episode, check out this one with Kelly and Julia Starrett. It's me talking right here. Let's get out of pain and improve your life with movement. Click it. Right there. Click it. Oh. Yeah, yeah, click it. <laughs>